Good morning. I'm Black Dragon, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Black Dragon Biker News Network. Biker News! You can trust. You can trust us! You can trust us over here! Because we've been doing motorcycling in the motorcycle club world for about 35 years or so now. I first graced the doors of my Mighty Motorcycle Club, the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation, in August of 1989. From that day, through all those years of prospecting, through all the hell and misery I've gone through, I have been doing this biker thing! Yes, I have! Yes, I have! Now, there have been people doing it longer. There have been doing, people been doing it stronger. But nobody's been doing it any warmer than my co-host, Mike Brown. Dang, what an intro. I appreciate that. That's right. Water, that was epic. because it's about to get hot. It's the summertime. Me and Mike Ball here. Mike Ball and myself. Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday. Hey, we were almost on time today, too. Hey, doing our thing, my man. Doing our thing. That's right. Having a good time. So like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, like, and share to Mike Ball, Black Dragon, Black Dragon and Mike Ball, Monday through Friday, and the number one biker new show in all of our world. In all that world. was epic. Hey, we see you, South Africa. What's up, Chucky? We see all of our people all over the world, and we're thankful that you're with us today. Heck yeah, man. That was yeah. epic. That What yeah. an intro. Man. Hey, Mike Ball. How are you, hey, sir? Hey, how's it going? I'm doing good. We got... We got Chucky over there in in, uh, in uh, South Africa, and here's some guy I've never seen before. He yeah, must be in Russia it. somewhere. You see that guy? Is that yeah. Russian? That looks that looks like it's Russian or or it's not, it's not Ukrainian like that. Ukrainian something whatever. like that over there. Hey man, mm -hmm. thank you A for being on the show. We got SSW Custom Sewing over there in the Southwest. 
Finn over there in uh, Germany. Look at that, man. A love in the- Illinois. Shout out. Yeah, over there in the in the uh, Black Forest up there. We got Ronald Beal. Haven't seen him in a while. Good. Hey, Ronald, what's up? Road Rage Eight Ten Gator. Man, oh man. That's Smoke right. On, man. All, everyone's on today. Gotta love it. Yeah, you gotta man. love when it's an active, you know, morning. We're looking good, man. We're looking good. Hey, I have got a brown, beautiful pit bull, oh. Staffordshire Terrier. He looks um. He, he looks purebred to me. Uh, no papers. Uh, he's got his balls. Uh, non-neutered. That's tough. Something that ass. you need to know. Uh, real deal. Uh, dog here. I got to find a home for him. I got to find a home for this pit bull. I have named him Tank Augustus. Tank Augustus. Tank. I like that. Augustus. <laughs> the lion hearted. Oh, yeah. wow. Yes, Tank Augustus the Lionhearted. Yes. All right. You know, all my dogs get long names. Like, no, my I dog, know. Hope, Magda, Charity, Wargo, Almighty Dog of Dogs, the Benevolent, Great, Magnificent, Conqueror, the Lionhearted Bunch, the First Conquering Dog of the Tribe of Judah, Elect of God. Stop the cow. That was her name. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't, Don't do, do that. that now. Don't do that. And then, of course, we have Brutus here. Yes. Who has a bunch of names, too? Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't want to go through all of Brutus's names, but... It's a little ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. Who said that? Uh, me. It's not ridiculous. Dogs, oh, dogs must have great names because dogs are our soul. Yes. If your dog doesn't have five, six names, you're not representing your dog, the dog culture. I don't know how many people actually do that, Dragon. I don't think many people do that. I, I think you're wrong. I think if we take a poll, most people oh, out here. Look, yeah, okay. We could do a poll. We take a poll. Most people out here will say, Mike, my dog has six, seven names. What's Mike Ball talking right, about? Right, right. Hey, we named you Mike Ball the Wise. Yep. Mike Ball the Wise. That's four names on okay, you. Okay. That's, I guess it's four, you know. Yeah. Yeah. If that's, people said the wise, they'd already know who's walking words. in the room. Four words. I mean, that's not like title, title. It is a title. Well, I guess so. Wow. Mike Ball, the wise co-host, uh, professional streamer. I mean, we are the kings of today, you and I. We are the kings. We are. That's we, right. we, we, but all of us are the kings and queens in here. We we walk among the stratosphere of, of, of the newness of the world. Facts. You know? And I, I'm glad to be here with you young folks because... I love age. that we get to combine, you know, the the young and the motorcycle and the clubs are older. The only place that does that is motorcycle yeah. clubs, you know. But um, I think it's really magnificent because in my day and age, um, uh, most people my age are like, I don't, I don't do computers. I don't even do that, man. Yep, they don't know <laughs> how to sign into a YouTube channel. Do you know why they have Bibles in hotel rooms? No, I don't know the answer to that. But every hotel you've been, um, you've been That's in. That's a good question. Yeah, absolutely. In the drawer, there's always a Bible. Yeah. So a guy told me it was to keep people from committing suicides in hotels. Really? I mean, people, I, I, I kind of uh, understand that. A lot of people go to hotel rooms before they commit suicide. Mm. Uh, and if there's a Bible in the drawer, maybe they will uh, pick up the Bible right, and read it. That's, that's very story. interesting. That's the story I was told. Yeah, so last night, cool. of course, I I looked it up. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, why do, ho- why do hotels have Bibles in them? And uh, yeah, yeah, that that was <laughs> that was not the answer. No, it wasn't. So that was a good, that was a good, I mean, it's somebody a, made that shit up. Like MC that's a, protocol. That's a good one. Like MC protocol. It's believable. M, uh, motorcycle club means men's club. Motorcycle club means man's club. Somebody made that shit up. Do you know that? Somebody made that yes. shit up. Yes. Uh, somebody, I said once I would never text that. It was dumb. Now I'm a texting fool, right? <laughs> yeah. That's so what happens. This is the, this is why there are Bibles in hotels. These guys. Okay, so check this out. Uh, let's go back to me for a minute. I was going to write a Bible for bikers. I was oh, going to call yeah. it 
the Biker's Bible. It's going to be the regular Holy Bible with just stuff in it for bikers, like, you know, a place to put prospects. Like a club could buy this thing, this big Bible, and it would be set up for motorcycle clubs with the name of the prospects and all kinds of stuff, uh, the place for the bylaws. So when you went to go get the bylaws, you'd actually be breaking out the Holy Bible on their ass. That's dope. And Yeah, but guess what? You can't do that. No? Because every Bible in the United States of America is owned by copyright. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, there's a company, mo- mo- mostly like the Gideon Co. There's some companies out there that own the Bible. The only way you can write a Bible yourself is to translate it from the texts. Wow. And that takes 10, 15 years. Yeah, forget about it. So the only way you're going to write a Bible is... What about gonna... chat uh, GPT or whatever? You know what I mean? Just go in well, there. You know, when I looked it up, I looked it up before there was chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You might Yeah, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, we're problem solvers, you know what I mean? How does Sven know my birthday? Look at that, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we know. Hey. Thank you, Spin. Thank you. Uh, April my, babies. Yeah, my b- birthday's in two days. Wow. That's scary. Uh, you guys know too much about me. But anyway, um, so the only way you're going to write a Bible is you got to pay them, and they'll put together any Bible you want. Really? Yeah, but it's big That's money. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's big, but it's big money. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It costs a little bit. Wow. So anyway, I, so I, I, so that's why I got into looking up. So I was like, you know, if I can't write my own Bible, but why are they in hotels? And it turns out that these people who started the Gideon Bible Company were all salesmen, and they were all traveling together, and they decide they were all met in a hotel room, and they realized that they were all men of faith, and that there was no Bible in the hotel room, and they felt like if they put Bibles in hotel rooms, it would be a place of comfort for hotels and it would make people want to be there and it would welcome people. Hmm. Uh, so they didn't particularly, that, and that, that's what this whole article explains here, but they didn't particularly w- were they out to stop people from committing suicide, but I bet maybe a but Bible. Has. Yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. And that, that's believable, you know, yeah. with the self deletion thing, but with the, the, the the whole thing that you just had, that's also, you know, also something I understand. You know, it's and, just more comfort. Now, did it become tradition? Yeah, it became. And it, right here it says, did I delete it? There's no way. You I just put it over that. it. Oh, there. Thanks. So right here it says the day the first Bible went into uh, the first a traveling salesman, a, a, a tra- as, as traveling salesman, the founders of the Gideons International, which is the Bible company, knew a thing or two about life on the road. These guys decided uh, on a journey, this group of Christian businessmen, can you believe it? Back in the late 19th century, three traveling salesmen found themselves sharing a room in a crowded inn. They realized they shared a common faith and felt a calling to create an organization that could support other traveling professionals. Thus, in 1899, the Gideons International was born, named after the biblical figure Gideon. They chose a mission close to their hearts to share the word of God by distributing Bibles around the world. And so they thought that they'd put them in hotel rooms. Uh, as the traveling vision of the founders, they knew a thing or two about traveling on the road. They understood that people far from home might seek comfort or solace in the familiar words of the Bible. By 1908, they began placing their Bibles in hotel rooms. The first hotel room to receive a Gideon Bible was the Superior Hotel in Superior, Montana. And from that single act, a longstanding tradition was born. Yeah, Little did they know, yeah. this simple act of faith would lead to millions of Bibles in hotel rooms worldwide, sparking curiosity and comfort for many travelers. In this way, the seemingly unrelated worlds of hospitality and religion found a unique intersection. And they made a lot of money. Very interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, man, it's been a long time. Something. We learn something every day around here, man. Yep. So I, I, I was looking up, you know, where the Bible, you know, how because some it's not, it's incredible. Yeah, they put Bibles in hotel rooms to keep people from committing suicide there. Well, it's and believable. I've been, I've been telling people that's BS forever. 
forever <laughs> until it took me like two minutes to look this shit up. And what's important about it is this. MC protocol is the same way. People make shit up. Yep. As they go. And, and, and the difference is, um, the difference is there was never a place that you could go look that up. Right. You couldn't it, fact check it anywhere. Right. Cause it's not written but down anywhere. New, but with my newest book coming out, MC protocol one-on-one, we shall be able to check the truth. <laughs> Absolutely. I like that. Yeah. That you'll have right now you have you have six books by which you can go. You got the Sergeant at Arms Bible, the uh uh the President's Bible. Okay, Sergeant at Arms Brother, Soldier Sergeant of the MC Brotherhood, President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership, Prospects Bible, How to Join a Traditional Law Abiding Motorcycle Club. Public Relations Officer's Bible, Making the Public Relations Officer Real. And uh, Social Club's Bible. And also uh, Prospect Bible for Women's Motorcycle Clubs. You know, and you can get all those books right there down below. You know, it's blackdragonsgear.com. Not that I was doing some kind of a sales pitch. I knew no, they were I threw that. it up there. Look at Ed's. <laughs> I knew they were going to say that. That was not a sales pitch. I was just saying it all... What to get? You know what? I'm not time for the story. I'm I'm ready to move on from my from my uh uh from your pitch bruising crowd. <laughs> this guy. Hey, listen, Mike. What are ape hangers? Do you know that? What's the the rule for ape hangers? Yeah, it's nothing above the shoulders. You can't have it above the shoulders. If you're if you have your arms going above your shoulders, theoretically, those are ape hangers in California, at least. And ape hangers are illegal in most places. Why? Yes. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that either. Like, why? Are that's, a, that's a great question, actually. We should know that. Uh, I, You know, it might be something that we could. Why are Absolutely. ape hangers illegal? Oh, look, somebody else already asked this question. Of course. Uh, for those states with ape hanger laws. Ohio is a state that says handlebars can't be higher than shoulder height. Apparently not many cops know or care about the law, and it's almost in force. The reason I ask is why? Let's see. No, no, they don't answer why. No, not, not on Reddit. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, yeah this is Reddit. Usually uh, Reddit's like a trolling forum. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, here's Harley Davidson's forums. It's because apes are a protected species of anything that is Oh, my here, God. Such as ape hangers. Yeah, you wouldn't want an ape hanger, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Uh, anyway, I don't know why ape hangers are illegal. But right. if you have them, this guy got arrested. Eventually, it wound up because of his ape hangers. So a Cape Coral motorcycle gang member. Oh, my God. It's, of course. Man, these these top five clubs, man, they they catch hell. They, they always catch, catch hell. They if, catch you, hell. if they have one member go off, you go can't rogue, be a pagan or a hell's angel or an outlaw or a you can't do nothing. Bandito or a, a, you can't be a, a, a um uh oh my goodness uh none of those guys. No, you can hardly go to a bar without you know a whole ordeal. Without True. somebody calling you. A gang member. Yeah. And anytime you them. get into something, man, you know, anytime you get into something, they're going to call you a gang member. You can't be a Mongol, any of that, you know? But anyway, officials, and then they, they do this. Look at how they do this. Before they even get into the story of what this man did, or allegedly did, they got to talk about all outlaw motorcycle gangs. First, so they called him a gay, a motorcycle gang member, and then they go on to say officials say outlaw motorcycle gangs are highly structured criminal organizations. So now you're looking at a highly structured criminal whose members engage in criminal activities such as violent crime, weapons trafficking, and drugs trafficking. They put all this up there before we get to see his face. So now we're looking at a hardened criminal who was guilty of 
having handlebars above his shoulder. <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, they have oh, Theodore Standish here, and uh, they got the big stamp on him, Lee County Jefferson's, and uh, uh, Lee County Sheriff's Office, and then by, Big Pine Key, Florida. A Cape Coral man who is a member of the Pagans Motorcycle Gang was arrested after fleeing from police. And after reading all this, you're like, yeah, I, I, I bet he was. <laughs> According to uh, the Monroe County Sheriff's Office, Theodore Stannis is a member of an outlaw motorcycle gang known as the Pagans. So they've said the gang word about 15 times now. Yep. Click, 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 bait. Officials say outlaw motorcycle gangs are highly structured. Here we go. Back in the outlaw motorcycle gang. Outlaw motorcycle gangs are highly structured criminal organizations, members whose members engage in criminal activities such as violent crimes, weapons trafficking, and drug trafficking. So 400 words we've dedicated, and we haven't even gotten to the story yet. The report, <laughs> this is rough. The report states Standish was attending a biker party on Big Pine Key. Uh, do they have time for parties? Yeah, right. <laughs> the yeah. Mm -hmm. With all the highly criminal structurized things they're doing, is there any time for them to party? Anyway, in his brief time of doing whatever the hell it was he's doing out there in the world to destroy the world for democracy... He did have some time to party, and while attending that party on Big Pine Key on February 10th, when police say he was riding a motorcycle with handlebars eight inches above his shoulders, which is illegal. <laughs> did they have, like, did they have a visual? There's no rule? way, man. The cop was riding behind him. He was like, where's my phone? <laughs> where's my damn phone? Yeah, I need oh. my tape measure. It's, it's, it's about eight inches. Let's see. That, that guy is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crazy. Or do That's they have absurd. Like, do they have like a, a, a measurer, like, you know, a heads up display in their car, like airplane cap? Yeah, it shows the, the exact, uh, you know, yeah. Or like the periscope I, has like hash marks on it or something, you know? Right. I'm just wondering. Oh, my goodness. How the hell do they know uh, that, that, you know, they're looking, um, at that when they see that i'm just just wondering yep that's a fact hardwire that's some serious profiling he says yep yeah it it's um 100 crazy man uh i'm just wondering if if uh you know if this is let me see oh shit joseph she lied to you that's not eight inches dang <laughs> we got big drift up in the building shout out to you I'm just, I'm just wondering if they're looking out of the front window, if they're looking out of something like this. They're like, huh. oh, wow. Yeah, huh? they see how the height oh, of God. the eight. Stone bitch got eight inches. <laughs> got He's eight got eight, eight inches. inches. He's getting, we're pulling him over. We're arresting his ass. It's ridiculous. But anyway, uh, stop the cap. The report says Stannis was attending a biker party and, uh, and, uh, on February 10th, when police say he was riding uh, with motorcycle handlebars eight inches above his shoulders, which is illegal. Uh, they they write, which is illegal in there. They had to add that in there. This, this statute says, no person... Oh, we need our statute voice. No person shall operate any motorcycle with handlebars or hand grips that are higher than the top of the shoulders of the person operating the motorcycle while properly seated upon the motorcycle. So, but where yeah. why why is it that it's illegal though? Like I, why why can't we have apes above I, our shoulders? I don't know. It doesn't the laws never say why in the law books. That's, ridic say, that's yeah. ridiculous. There there needs to be a real freaking answer for that. So uh the deputy from Monroe County attempted to pull over Stannis into a nearby parking lot. However, Stannis, probably tired of the bullshit <laughs> of getting pulled over like that, he fled. The deputies attempted to follow him, one on a motorcycle, one lame on a motorcycle, and one lame in a patrol car. Uh, they said, you can't beat the radio. He obviously did. They lost sight of him after he turned onto Quail Roost Trail on Big Pine Key. Detectives spotted Stannis's motorcycle hiding behind a red Ram truck on the deputy's dash camera. Later, the motorcycle was found in the same location with a, oh, so they went, okay, that's what they did. 
they went through his dash camera and probably as he passed by, they saw the bike hiding. So they, they observed it first on a dash camera. And then later they went to that location and found, uh, and f later the motorcycle was found at that same location with a bent license plate, they say, to avoid being identified. It could have just been a bit like how, how bent could have it been? I'm, I mean, if it's folded over or something ridiculous, sure. But uh, at that say, point, they would have a hiding, you know, one of those they didn't hiding say folded over. They said bent to avoid being identified. And watch course. it be just a little dent in it. And they're like, it's bent. It's bent. It's, it's bent. been tampered. It's, it's, it's been tampered with. The outlaw gangster tampered with it and bent it, of course. Right. The deputies attempted to follow him. Uh, they fought him. Later, they went back uh, and. Uh, found this bike with a bent license plate. Upon further investigation, several videos from different Big Pine Key locations were found. Like they knock on your door and they say, can I see your ring camera? That's what's hap That's mm -hmm. what happens these days. And they clearly found these cameras showing Stanish riding that motorcycle. So not only did they, so they did their homework and, and they went back to several cameras all over the place and were able to determine, yeah, that was it. That's where it's parked. And yeah, you were riding it. Detectives then reached out, reached out to Cape Coral police who conform, confirmed that they had responded to Stannis' res residence back in November. So they're building a big old case on his ass here. Seems yeah, like. We were over there last November. It sure is him. The video footage from that encounter showed a red Dodge Ram truck, the same one Stannis was hiding behind on Big Pine backed into a driveway of the Cape Coral house. In the video, Stannis spoke with officers and ident identified himself way back then. So now Stannis has been arrested in Lee County with an arrest warrant issued against him. It was found he doesn't have a driver's license in Florida and his Connecticut license has been suspended. As a result, Theodore Stannis was charged with reckless driving, failing to obey law enforcement officers, fleeing, and eluding police. Mm. He is expected to be held on bond of $75,000 until he is extradited to Monroe County. Now, did he actually, actually run? He actually ran, I guess. I mean, they figured all that out. $75,000. So it, it all stemmed, though, from the handlebars. The from the hanger handlebars. That's right, crazy. Listen, motorcycle Club Brothers. If your license ain't right. If your license ain't right. Then. Make sure everything else is. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a good license plate. Or a good license in Connecticut. And you're riding on a suspended Florida license, or whatever the case may be. You can't have a bent license plate and screwed up handlebars. I mean, something's got to be right. Something. They're going to get you. $75,000. This man might wind up going to jail for a, a few years. Absolutely. Over yep. bullshit. Over handlebars. Man, stop. And then probably throw them over on the gang, you know, profile list. They've already called him a gangster five times in the... Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's kind of evident. They kind of said it like 20 times before we even got to the real story. Gang, 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 gang. Rough. They, they get the treatment, man. That, hey, those guys that wear those big one percenter patches... Black or white. Those guys that wear those patches, man, they're, they're holding down a lot. They got a lot going on, bro. They got a lot going on. They, they're not catching no breaks. That's why I'm glad to see the ones on the black set at least having a piece, but they need to have a piece between each other. They mm -hmm. ain't got no piece coming nowhere else. For real. Everything else is out to get them. You know, it sucks. They 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 they're catching it on all sides, man. Seventy it's, it's better to come together, man. Okay, like I didn't like. Okay, I outran you guys real quick. Like 
it wasn't even like this long, protracted, long, drawn out, like, like running from the law. It was a little uh, sped up over the hill. Yeah, and got Caleb, away. stop the cap. Uh, Hellfighter Steve says, you don't have to be breaking the law to get profile. Just wear a three-piece patch. You know, Hellfighter Steve is a preacher, you know. Yeah? Yeah, Hellfighter. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Hellfighter. He's fighting for you guys not to go to hell. And y'all won't That's listen awesome. to him. Y'all won't listen to him. Y'all, y'all gonna go, y'all gonna wind up. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! I'm just telling y'all where y'all gonna wind up. Where, why is the Southern coming out real hard on you right now? <laughs> y'all, 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 like kind of like the gang, 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 gang. Gang, gang, gang. Hey, let's yeah. go to the next story. This one's kind of interesting. This nonviolent guy, uh, there's a nonviolent guy out there in the world. And uh, he had a nonviolent showdown with a biker in the wrong lane. So his story is interesting. A very common sight on this road, he's in, I think this is uh, in Mumbai. Very common sight on this road is over how uh, smart ass two wheelers. He didn't say ass, but he's, he means that. Mm-hmm. Smart ass two wheelers. Taking the wrong side of the road to skip traffic, uh, and so here's a picture of a of the two wheeler that he conf- uh, the 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 little motorcycle thing he confronted the scooter, and you can see little clearly, Vespa. Uh, yeah, that looks like a Vespa, a nice one too. You can see clearly this is a real nice Vespa here, a Vespa with a cover over it, a three wheeler Vespa. That's a nice, that's a taxi one. But anyway, you can see everybody's clearly on this side of the road except for. Every now and then you have this biker. They cut over here to to avoid traffic. So he says, it's infuriating to see them flouting rules with complete audacity. What really got my blood boiling today was an obnoxious moron who could have caused a very fatal accident. The only one that's going to be in a fatal accident and a motorcycle car wreck is the motorcycle. But here he's got a picture of the guy riding the wrong way in traffic. And it's because all these other cars over here are... are Jam-packed. Yeah. So there's, they're so jam-packed over there, there's no center line <laughs> to right. ride down. So they just said, F it, we'll just ride on the wrong side of the road. He said, you see, I'm almost hitting the pedestrian, then turning and shouting at her for being on the phone. He's in the wrong lane of traffic. He's going to yell at her for being on the phone. Get off the phone when you run across the street. Get in the right lane of traffic, moron. <laughs> <laughs> this, this could go on all day. I love, bikers. I love bikers. Bikers are effed up everywhere we are. Everywhere we, we, we got are. some ego. We got some ego, you know? We, we got problems. <laughs> we got problems. We got issues. We we need Jesus or something. <laughs> the turning and shouting at her for being on the phone. He said, I did the most nonviolent thing I could do. He's such a good guy. I did the non-violent. most nonviolent thing. I stood there and sat on the horn for him to go back and take the correct lane. In turn, He's behaving like he owns the road and has done nothing wrong. This is very common attitude with drivers on Indian roads. They may be in the wrong, breaking the law, but they will abuse you and give you and give a, and not give a damn about others. Watch the video for the nonviolent showdown. So here we're going to go watch the nonviolent, nonviolent showdown. Nonviolent. I like that. Yeah. He didn't whoop his ass like, like probably he should have. Okay. So here we go. The nonviolent seconds is showdown. Here we go. I wish we had some drum roll music. No, yeah, right. All we get is a. Uh, where's my? I'm just missing it all together. Where is it? There we go. That's the best we can do. Drum roll, please. All right. Okay. So there's no music here. Here, are, all these bikes are going on the wrong side of the road. Look at yeah. that. It's more than just one. He just picks one arbitrarily. Picks one. So he almost runs over the woman here, and now he's yelling at her for being on the phone. Get on the damn phone! And so he picks this guy. And the guy yeah, because there. because he had to stop. That's why the Karen okay. had to stop. So he picks this guy. <laughs> yeah, out of out of the thousands that are going by, they're swinging by. <laughs> you know, it's like guy. common. <laughs> Jesus. And then the one guy that oh, poor Karen had to put on the brakes. You know what I mean? Oh like, my oh, goodness! You're gonna pick out that guy. Look! Look at this. He's got his uh, license plate on the front of his bike. It's interesting over there. Okay, so we'll back up a little bit. The guy's cussing out the woman for being in the street. Look at him. Get get off the phone, you Karen. And now he turns to see this man staring at him. Look at the look on his eyes. Yeah, like, the, 
Like, what whoa, the hell are you what are you where did you pop up from? <laughs> and now I was looking at now the Mexican standoff occurs. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna oh, do? Oh my god, he's tough. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna oh, do? He called his yeah. arm. Now everybody's wasting time. Everybody's got to go to work here. <laughs> he's sitting there. What is that? Was epic. Stuff? Look at that. <laughs> These guys are both nonviolent. <laughs> So it is a Mexican the standoff. Time, the whole time this guy's laying on his horn. You guys can't see uh hear it, but the whole now look at this guy looking over. Like, <laughs> what the hell are you guys doing? This guy's riding. He, he's looking over. That's funny. He rides up, he looks at him like he's just staring at him. Look. <laughs> These guys are this guy's laughing. <laughs> look, no, those two guys on that Vespa. Yeah, they're staring at this guy <laughs> like, what the hell? This guy rides up laughing. <laughs> Jesus. And look, he's laughing his yeah, ass. Yeah, he's off. cracking up. This guy's looking at him like, why don't you just go, man? And uh, he looks over there with an acknowledgement of, yeah, I am being a dumbass. <laughs> uh, and this guy waves at the guy in the horn. Now, this whole time he's laying on his horn so everybody can hear him. And this guy waves at him like, hey, man, going on with that bullshit. Watch. He, he kind of waves him off. Get out of here with that. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Now he turns his motorcycle on. And decides to go around. Look at him goosing it the whole time. Yeah. Like how you got a goose of Vespa? Stop it. Here, what? What? Look at his. Look at his. Uh, his throttle. Yeah, here hair. it goes. The throttle ham. <laughs> it's like a little sewing machine. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Oh my gosh. What a wonderful rough. day. What that a wonderful day that was. Ah, traffic Yikes. in Mumbai, man. <laughs> Have You'll you ever been to Mumbai? It's, uh, no. it's got like. A hundred million people in the city, or something. Yeah, forget about that. Thirty-five it's million way people. Too, way too uh, overpopulated. How many people are in Mumbai? Gary says P Diddy asks, "What's wrong with you, bikers?" <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as what's wrong with him. So there were twenty million nine hundred sixty-one thousand people in Mumbai in twenty twenty-two. Oh, okay, that's not too twenty crazy. million. There is only six. Million, 10 million people in all of Georgia. Yeah, but that's Georgia. Look up, look up the population. In- look up at the population of LA. Los Angeles itself? Yeah. How many just, people are just in Los, Los Angeles. Angeles? It won't be nothing. 3.8 3. million? Oh, we'll do Los Angeles County then. Well, th- we're just talking the city though. Los Angeles. Now then that's what I was thinking. That's what I'm correcting on. 9.7 million. Okay, so that's not even that crazy. That's I was thinking it was. In, I th- I thought it was in the the fifteen million range, but wow, it's a lot less. And so 9. that 7. makes sense. So they I mean, that's a more, mega city. They got more people in one city than all of the county of L.A. Yeah, that's crazy. In South Africa, we have a mini bus taxis that uh, carry up to twenty people, and they use the oncoming lane to get to their destination. It's become the norm. How is it the norm to go the wrong way in traffic? That's terrifying. Yeah, it, I think, I mean, you, you saw how many people were flying by, you know, yeah. on the wrong side. It was just like it wasn't nothing but a thing. No, they, they don't care. Made them do it. Yeah, totally made them do it. Uh, wow, that's crazy. Hey, look, Mike, uh, over there, did you see that one news article? A long time ago, where they had the the kid from the high school uh, mouthing off to the Native American dude. No, you don't remember that. No, they were standing face to face, and they called the kid some kind of uh, racist, like racial racial stuff. slur yeah. or something. Oh, call because him a he was mouthing off to the Indian dude, or or maybe they were just staring at each other face to face. He got hmm. in the face of some old Native American dude, and he was a young white kid. Hey, listen. You can't get in the face of old dudes, man. The world's going to hate you. The anyway, world will. He, he tried to. Be yeah, out. You can't get in the face of any old dude, black, white, or other. Nope. And you're a young dude. You can't. Right. You that don't look so dude. tough doing that shit. Yeah. Well, he tried to sue. He, he said it was cancel culture. And he <laughs> tried to sue the, the uh, newspapers and stuff that. They did make him look bad, Mike. They made him look bad. They made him look like a racist. They called him a racist. I don't even know that he ever even said one racist thing, but they, wow. your boy was looking bad. That's a bummer. Even I, even I called him names. <laughs> I wouldn't let him join any reindeer games. That's so, hilarious. 
one foggy Christmas Eve, he went to the Supreme Court on y'all's ass. He took y'all's ass to the Supreme Court. And they slammed him, too. <laughs> so it went all the way to the Supreme Court. Yeah, and they said they rejected his case. On They called it a dust-up between a Catholic student and a Native American. The Supreme Court Monday declined to hear the case of a former Kentucky high school student and supporter of Donald Trump who said he'd been the victim of cancel culture after a video of his interaction with an elderly Native American man went viral in 2019. The decision leaves in place the lower court's dismissal of a massive libel lawsuit filed by Nicholas Sandman against Garnett, the parent, uh, Gannett, rather, the parent company of USA Today, and other media organizations for their coverage of the incident. We got to be careful when we cover stuff, man. You can find your ass in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, Chad, Sandman argued that he was defamed by their reports on his confrontation with the Native American rights activist Nathan Phillip at the Lincoln Memorial in January of 2019. Uh, that was the Indigenous People's March and March for Life. And he was standing nose to nose. A video of Sandman, then 16, and a student at Covington Catholic in Northern Kentucky standing nose to nose with Phillips went viral and unleashed a firestorm of internet criticism that the student's conduct was racially motivated, which Sandman denied. Phillips was attending an indigenous people's march while Sandman was walking in a March for Life event. Anyway, Sandman filed lawsuits against eight media organizations, including the New York Times, ABC News, CBS News, and Rolling Stone magazine, seeking a combined $1.25 billion. Billion. With a B for their coverage of the event. And Mike, I said this before, and I said it. I said it about the lady who won eight hundred and fifty or five uh, five hundred million dollars from Trump. I said it before. How can you be? How can you sue for one point two five billion dollars when you've never even seen that? When your ass was not worth one point two five billion dollars before. Right. You got to be worth that and, and a lot more to sue for that. I That's what I would think. If you were like maybe if they say you're going to make a million dollars over your lifetime, you could sue for a million. Or if you were already a multimillionaire, you could you might be able to claim three hundred million dollars. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're a ten dollar mofo. You're a high school student at nondescript, never heard of Catholic junior high, and now you're suing for ten billion dollars with a B. No, that's insane. That's a lot of money. Yeah, the Supreme Court said it was insane too. They they didn't yeah. listen. To it, so. They didn't. They didn't hear that shit. Yeah, they 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 told me. To get bent. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that that's a lot of money. Um, they're mad at the Supreme Court, and he was mad. Um, you know, he's mad at the Supreme Court. Everybody's mad. Nobody's happy in that one. Tough, huh? Tough out there, Mike. Mike? I had muted myself for a second. Oh. oh I said that is tough. You're petting a dog? I see. Yeah, okay. no, he was he was tripping for a second. Oh, you know, dogs trip, man. That's that's Absolutely. the thing they do. Um I was trying to find my other story I had for you guys. Um that was exactly kind of hardwired. That's like a guy making 70k a year suing for a million dollars for six months lost wages. Makes no sense. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This one was kind of interesting. Uh, and we're seeing this happen all over the country, Mike. Am I lagging? No, it, they were actually saying that it was me. Hold on one second. Heck yeah. Uh, what is that? Athletes erupt and resign from national team over transgender policy. Yeah, so this is interesting. What kind of trouble could they be having in the National Darts League? Darts League? Yeah. You didn't know that darts was... That's had, legendary. Yeah, and like they didn't even got that many people watching. Like, they're not in those super halls somewhere. Man, that's that's more people than I would expect. Look at that. that well, there is a lot of people in that one. Yeah, so the National dot, Darts people are pissed off right now. And a couple of them quit. The uh, and Athletes erupt and a couple of the national team people quit 
because of a a transgender policy that wow. they have. Yeah. So uh, I'm trying to get to it. Uh, doesn't allow me in it. Anyway, this the way the story went because um oh maybe they do it like this. Yeah. So. Dutch star players have resigned from the national team over their transgender teammate. The decision of two veteran women darts players, Anka Jilstra and Aline de de Graaf, to resign from the Netherlands national team due to their refusal to compete alongside a transgender woman has sparked a significant debate within the darts community. The dart folks ain't playing. No, they're not. The players cited their discomfort with representing the Netherlands alongside transgender player Noah Lynn Van, Lu- uh, Van Leuven, leading to their decision to step down from their positions. Hey, we'll go play darts somewhere else. This move, has raised, bar. <laughs> this, ruse, this move has raised pertinent questions about inclusion, fairness, and acceptance in sports, particularly in relation to transgender athletes. These are the three things, Mike. Inclusion. You know, we want to include everybody. Mm-hmm. Fairness. Is it fair for anatomically born men to compete against anatomically born women? So inclusion, everybody you want everybody to be in, but fairness, does sh- is it fair? No. And then acceptance in sports. Like if you're saying that it's not fair and we're not gonna do it, are we being unaccepting and non- Conclusive or in non inclusive, non inclusive. Thank you, mm-hmm. Mike. Appreciate that. So, particularly in relation to transgender athletes, so this has crept itself all the way into the dart world. Anka Jilstra and Aline de Graaf made their decision public through social media posts, expectance, uh, expressing their reluctance to continue representing the Netherlands t- a national team alongside their transgender teammate. Uh, and uh, Zistra emphasized feeling ashamed to be part of the Dutch team due to the inclusion of a transgender individual, while the graph highlighted the importance of making decisions that align with personal feelings. So we got to go with our heart on this one, folks, is what they're mm. saying. The players I'm going to let this dog out real quick. The, uh, okay. The player's decision to resign from the national team has ignited debate about the principles of fairness and inclusivity in sports. The Dutch Darts Association defended Noah Lynn Van Leeuwen, stating that she had completed her transition and meets all the requirements of, to play in the women's category. She, she, she did her surgery. She's a, a woman now, they say. The NDB expressed regret over the decision of Zilstra and de Graaf, emphasizing the importance of fostering a sport where everyone feels at home and can participate irrespective of personal characteristics. Man, that that's a... Uh, that's a tough one. The resignation of uh, Zilstra and de Graaf has underscored the ongoing dialogue surrounding the participation of transgender athletes in sports altogether. The development has reignited conversations and creating an equitable and accepting environment for all athletes, this conversation about that, regardless of their gender and identity. And I, I don't know if that is ever going to be decided. The uh, decision of the two veteran players has prompted reflection within the darts community about principles of fairness, respect, and inclusivity. The incident has brought attention to the complexities and challenges associated with accommodating accommodating diverse identities within the realm of competitive sports. The question is going to be, Mike, do identities trump the physical capabilities should up should up a man be allowed to compete in a sport with all women like no. the 880 or whatever they call it the 480 relay 440 whatever and you have a competitive advantage because you are stronger than them yeah if you're born a male you you're biologically different i don't care what people say there are plenty of people, including the uh, Federation of Dart Throwers, that disagree with you, Mike. The resignation of Anka Ziltra and Lean de Graaf from the Netherlands national dart team due to their discomfort with a transgender teammate has sparked a broader conversation. 
And uh, this development highlights the need for ongoing dialogue and efforts to foster an environment where athletes of all backgrounds and identities feel welcomed and respected. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and this goes on and on, but it, it comes down to this. Uh, they are pissed off and they quit the team. And you're going to see more and more and more of this as, um, as, as this goes on. You're going to see more and more and more of it. Um, just more. Very more. interesting. That's that's heavy. I mean, it's just put, coming on thick on every level. I I personally don't see. I just don't. I don't see the fairness. Uh, but we've gotten away from fairness in sports because yes. you know a long time ago we started um uh um. We started this thing where everybody gets a trophy. You know, that was that was anymore. my generation your, your that generation. did that. And uh, you know, luckily when I was growing up, I was in sports and all that, and it was the top three. It was always the top three, you know, that got the trophies. And some years I would get it, some years I wouldn't, you know, and that's just the way it was. And I'm glad that I went through that because you had to like earn that. You know what I mean? You didn't just get it. You had to earn it. It teaches you something as a child. Like, I need to better myself to get to that point. Mm -hmm. You got to mm -hmm. strive to to have something. If everyone gets it at the end, there's no motive or there's no, uh, there's nothing that's going to drive you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Unfortunate. Uh, our last story for today. A uh, court, the Minnesota court. You remember Philando Castile, the guy who was sitting in the car during the pandemic, and uh, the cop walks up to him and says, "Do you have a gun?" He goes, "Yeah, I have one right here." Bang, 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 bang. And he was shooting the cop. No, the cop shot him. No shit. Yeah, he was legally legally licensed to carry. The cop walks up and says, "Hey, do you have a gun?" And he goes, "Yeah, that's right." Bang, 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 all because he went to that because he did that yeah. looking like that reach hole thing mm -hmm. like wow they use that as the excuse yeah i almost got killed like that myself here in atlanta you was, you got to be like the whole time like I yeah it's, wearing, it's down there i was wearing my biker gear of i course. was in my cut i got off my motorcycle and a lady saw a gun as my cut opened up a lady saw my gun uh, it's in little five points. She was eating in a restaurant. She called the police from her cell phone. Said there's a black man biker with a gun, blah, blah, blah. And so as I'm walking down the street, um, and at that time I had my dog, Hope. Hope oh, Magda Charity Wargo, Almighty Dog of Dogs, Brazil, Great Magnificent Conqueror, <laughs> Lionhearted Bunch, First Conquering Dog of the Tribe of Jita, Elect of God. I had her. Yeah. And uh, we were walking. And four police semi-circled me and said, sir, do you have a gun? And I said, yeah, right. And they all just, they all just freaked. Uh, they didn't draw their guns. They just all was like, no, 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 no. you know, don't do that. And then uh, three of them were black. And that's probably what saved my life. Because uh, the, the one lead black guy stepped up and put his hand on my shoulder the one lead officer. They said, no, sir, we just were asking if you had it. He was incredibly pissed off the whole time. He was absolutely pissed off. And uh, he, I said, yes, of course I have my gun. This is Georgia. Why would Everyone I have carries. Gun? Yeah. And he, uh, and he said, uh, and, and I bet you've got a license for it too. Yeah, fuck yeah, I've got a license for it. He said, you know, that's what these citizens need to understand. And he's he's yelling the whole time, not at me, but... At his other officers, yeah. he, he didn't want to confront me in the first place because he's like, this is Georgia and people have guns. Now it's different. Back then, you had to have a concealed carry permit here. Now today, you ain't got to have a carry permit at all. It says mm -hmm. constitutional carry, right? Yeah. You can just carry that sucker right on your hip like wider. <laughs> yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. <laughs> yeah, sir. <laughs> Where's your gun, John? Right here, right here, right here, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Yes, <Yeah>, sir. 
I got it right here, buddy. <laughs> you want to see it? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Not <Yeah>. the cap. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Rough. That's the way it is now. You don't you don't see all that old car jacket and shit around here. No, sir. <laughs> Not in Georgia. When was the last time you seen a, a Walmart get shot up around here in these parts? Right. They're shooting up that Walmart. Hey, buddy, let's go. <laughs> hey, let's go get them. Yep. Let's go get them. Yes, yeah, right. season. Mm -hmm. That's how it is here. They're proud for it. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Buddy. But anyway, this poor guy got murdered for that. And anyway. I think they have something. The Minnesota, Minnesota court has, has upheld, upheld the decision the against, against Geronimo, Geronimo Yanez, the ex-officer who fatally shot Philando Castile. Yanez, seeking a substitute teacher license, faced rejection from the licensing board due to his manslaughter case. Despite his appeal, the court affirmed the board's decision, citing moral standards required for teaching. Yanez's history renders him unfit for public school teaching, marking a setback in his path to redemption. The fatal shooting of Philando Castile in 2016 stirred public outrage leading to questions about Yanez's acquittal and moral character. Despite live footage of the incident, Yanez was acquitted due to insufficient evidence. The public's revolt against unprosecuted murders, including Castile's, fueled nationwide protests. Following the shooting, Yanez resigned from the police force, receiving a separation agreement. Despite transitioning to teaching, Yanez's license application was denied, as he racially profiled Castile and endangered lives. Experts testified against Yanez's suitability for teaching emphasizing the ethical demands of the profession. Yanez's lawyer criticized the board's decision, alleging bias and lack of expertise. However, the court upheld the board's decision, prioritizing student safety and ethical standards over Yanez's teaching aspirations. If you like this video, consider following us on MSN. So we wow. Holy moly. This brings up several things. First of all, uh, it's kind of like the OJ shooting. Like, if the public believes that you're guilty, no matter how much a court finds you not guilty, you will be guilty forever. Public opinion is very real. Just and it can be swayed. It can be swayed like that, too. Just I can't really snap. I don't have much of a thumb, but there you go. That, hey, I sound like I can snap with my <laughs> microphone. But really, if you're without the microphone, it just sounds like a... Yeah. But with the microphone, bro, you got some snap to it. it sounds like I can snap. But anyway, uh it it um if they don't like you, if the public doesn't like you. Thank you, Andrew, Andrew, for dropping in. If the I public doesn't it. like you, my bro, if the public doesn't like you, if they feel like you did something, it brings up a whole lot of things. Like, do I ever get a second chance? The majority of shootings in the US happen in cities with the strictest gun laws. Absolutely. But do I do I ever get a chance? Excuse me. Do I ever 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 get a to, like to to redeem myself? Like, bro, can't be a police officer. He can't be a teacher. What's next for him? A dock worker? They're yeah. gonna show up on the docks? Like, no, hey, no, nah, no, you're, bro, you're, no, you're not allowed here. You're not a, not on the dock. You're kind. <laughs> you're kind. It's not allowed yeah. here. The Uber is he? The Uber drivers? They gonna turn against his ass too? Sorry. Hey, you can't drive no Uber with us, man. It's uh, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. Mike, don't don't deaden the mic when you cuss the kids out. We want. No, no, no. It was it was the dog actually because he we was were... starting to do the wine. We want to hear though. <laughs> Started doing the wine. You can. My my two are silent right now. So yeah. And then so... I got the little one cruising back there. Man, Mike. Um. Anyway, uh, I kind of I'm kind I feel kind of two ways about it. I'm happy. That he's catching hell in his life because he murdered that kid, right? And, and and maybe maybe it wasn't murder because you know the cop didn't wake up and say I'm going to go murder somebody, but it was definitely uh, involuntary manslaughter, and he got acquitted for lack of evidence, and the whole shit was on TV on on, on a video, and it just goes. But, to it, show but they called it lack of evidence. Well, it just goes to show how police departments have the police the public on lockdown. They have us so afraid that if we hold them accountable for something, they're not going to police for us anymore. Mm. 
I call the defund the police. You asked for them to be defunded. No, what they were asking for was for them to stop killing innocent people with guns and then walking away from it like it wasn't Jack. That's what they were asking for. It came out as defund the police, but what they were saying is, okay, okay, we know we're killing a whole bunch of bunch of black people in our cities. We know that. And we know that uh, the black on black crime is bad. We know that. But we also know we're being killed by cops too. So can we stop? You know, we want to stop that too. And that turns into defund the police, blah, 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 blah. Um, no, they were trying to stop. Uh, well, and you saw it really bad in the two thousand uh, in the twenties when the uh, pandemic was going. We saw it real bad, several high profile killings. So I'm kind of happy that he's having hell in his life, but I think it speaks towards a higher thing that we are very unforgiving as a as as a nation, like just the O.J. Simpson case. Once mm-hmm. once you feel like uh, a guy is guilty, um. It doesn't matter if they find him. And then, then then it brings forth another thing, that we're never willing to let somebody move on. You know, you get out of prison, where can you get a job? It's hard. It's hard. By the way, American Doberman, by the way, SSW. Yeah. Well, uh, I missed that. Anyway, yeah. So what do you, what do you, um, what, what do you ever... Ever get a break? Do you ever get to walk past? Uh, in the Navy, the answer was no. Mm-hmm. In the Navy, uh, we used to have a saying, perception is reality. We used to have another saying, uh, you're always you're always as good as your last aw as shit. Your, as your aw shit. It, it's basically, oh, what I've been told is a thousand attaboys gets wiped out by... That's one it. Shit. A thousand out of boys is destroyed by one aw shit. Mm-hmm. That's the Navy term. Thank you, Mike. You are a sailor, so I'm glad you knew that. A thousand out of boys are wiped out by one aw shit. Yeah. So. Yeah, one one aw shit wipes out a thousand out of boys. That's the exact saying. Boom. Yeah. I was saying it backwards. Yep. Did someone just correct us? No, that was me correcting oh, myself. Okay. So anyway, yeah, it's an hour for us now. We've been on Absolutely. an hour. Absolutely. This hour flew by, man. We're going to have some guests this upcoming week. Um, Talk about it. Yeah, we're going to have some guests. We got this guy. Uh, I'm just waiting for his people to get back to us. This guy who wrote this incredible book on the craft of motorcycling, the the craft of riding a motorcycle. This is the most amazing book I've ever seen in my life. It's got um, all these these huge... Color pages. Uh, he talks about every kind of way that you can ride a motorcycle. Look at that! All the different. That's really cool, actually. This, this I've never seen a. Listen, I'm a book writer. I have never seen a book put together like this one, man. This book is hardcore, and um, uh, we're gonna go through this stuff. Look at this. He's got a. A record here, kind of. Yep. The first time, time. You, ever, you ride your motorcycle. This guy is this. This book is amazing. So hopefully, we'll have this guy in the studio sometime this week to talk to him about um, this book that he's written and get some of his tips about what we love to do, which is riding motorcycles. So this guy wrote a book, "The Craft and Art of Motorcycling: First Time Ride to the Road Ahead." So nice. I we're like that. Check this guy out here. So we're gonna have him in the studio. Uh, Jake's people have told me to get back in touch with him. So we're going to have Jake back in the studio. You remember Jake, the American original, uh, he's written a volume one and a volume two and he's 80 something right now. So we, we want to get Jake in the studio, like maybe once a month or something while we still have him and we can learn from him. And, uh, this, oh my God, I can't believe I just flipped to this page. This is when Jake got shot in the chest, man. Um, for, uh, for the Hell's Angels. Um, so Jake yeah, that's when he Angels. got struck with a, was it a shotgun shell? No, or a shotgun was, uh, blast? No, or what was it? No, I think it was a, a sidearm. Uh, but this is the guy who was made a um, a member of the uh, Hell's Angels after one day of prospecting, in his first day of prospecting. Like, um, 
uh, he was a prospect, and they were talking about kicking a guy's door open to uh, go get some retribution or money or whatever the guy had done wrong. And Jake says, oh, I don't think we should do that. And they said, we're going to do it anyway. So as the prospect, he said, well, let me be the first through the door. And he took a bullet hole right in the chest, man. For the club on club time. Uh, for the club on club time. He was a member of the next day. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, he is also a strong man, uh, a roar. He was a bodybuilder. You see your boy right there? Yep. Yeah, Jake was Jake is something else, man. A very cool dude. So we're gonna get him back in the studio, man. Uh, we got some some big time one percenters that are coming in the studio. They'll be talking about the piece that they've got going on. Uh, I've been promised some uh, interviews with some of the top people in some right. of these clubs. So this will be the first time some of these clubs are interviewing at all. Period. Ever speaking to the press. So. Yeah, Mike, Mike, we're going to be doing the dancing. It's amazing. Got time for you to get us out of here, Mike. All right. Much love and respect to everybody. Thank you for watching. Uh, Guys, also remember that we are heavily uh, demonetized on YouTube. So if you guys can can and are willing to support, you guys have the uh, donation down there for the channel. You have dollar sign biker press. And... The little girl wants up, so we'll get her up. What's up? Say hi to everybody. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, and then that is, and then also hit, um, let's see, Black Dragons AOL PayPal is jbunchii at aol.com. And then mine is at ball valve uh, for the Venmo. And then for Cash App, it's dollar sign ball valve. And then make sure you guys are like commenting, subscribing, uh, sharing the videos out. And also, guys, we're still looking for sponsorship deals that we're going to be doing. So we're still putting that out there that we're taking sponsors for the channel and also for um, ad space and all of that stuff. So we're excited to come out with that media kit for you guys. Absolutely. So much love. And I'll see you guys here in uh, less than 24 hours. Much love and respect. Take yeah. care, Mike. And I'm Black Dragon. Thank you guys for tuning in uh, to Black Dragon Biker TV. Biker news you can trust. Hopefully you guys are having a good time with our new format. We absolutely appreciate having you. Thank you so much for all your support. Support. Thank you for all of my new subscribers, man. It's so good to have you guys. It's uh, amazing. Hope you guys like the show. Send us uh, your um, 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 oh my good ideas and that sort of thing and so we can make the show better for you if you have people you want us to interview send those to you ssw custom sewing uh, i am definitely going to get back to those people you've asked me to to uh to interview over the the many months that you've asked me to i've just been so screwed up but i'm definitely going to get back to those people now that we're doing this format so hey man i'm black dragon spin over in the black forest love you man be careful take care tell korean uh, uh i said Hello, and, um, you know, be cool, my man, over there in Germany. Uh, Chucky, love you, everybody. I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents. Love to hear yours in the comment section below. Let me get queued up to get out of here. I got to queue up the right thing here. And uh, you guys take care. Much love. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny. Prepare yourself to take the helm as president of your mighty motorcycle club by delving into the pages of Black Dragon's newest book, The President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. There you will learn to advance your skills in applying the 14 scientific principles of leadership similar to those taught to officers in the United States Naval Service. Available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook, get yours today on Amazon. Kindle or order it at your local bookstore. Order your autographed copy from blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club president you can be. Get the book. Get Black Dragon's first book, The Prospects Bible, to learn how to join a motorcycle club. It has been an Amazon number one bestseller for the past seven years and is required reading for over 3,000 motorcycle clubs worldwide. This book is a must-have for new people venturing onto the motorcycle club set. It will teach you how to prepare yourself 
for service to the Motorcycle Club Nation and show you how to qualify a motorcycle club to be worthy of your service. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and for order at your local bookstore. Get your autograph copy at blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club prospect you can be. Get the book. Like and share. Like and share. Goodbye.